All right, welcome back to part three of the Operations Pro with JMRI. So if you haven't had the chance to check out the first two videos, make sure you go do that before you watch this one. Um, video one is how we just do all the basic settings, get you know Operations Pro set up. And then part two is adding cars. Now this time we're going to add locomotives. Adding locomotives is a little different. Um, because we need more information and sometimes we have to do a little bit of research on that information so I'm pulling up a picture of my Alco RS1 and this is my only Rock Island locomotive that I have because I mostly model the cotton belt however a small portion of the layout is going to be the Rock Island so since we did my Rock Island caboose last time on the last video, what more fitting than to just go ahead and do my Rock Island locomotive. All right, so first thing we're going to want to do is click operations at the top, and we're going to go to locomotives. Ah, oh, looks very similar to the cars database. At the bottom, there's an add button. We're going to add. Now, let's see. First thing we need to do is put our road, uh, road in. So that's going to be RI for Rock Island. The locomotive's number is 742. And the model of this thing, this is an RS1. So we got RS1 right there, so that's good. Uh, this is a diesel type, but you know, you got all different types of locomotives in there. And for steam, you can even classify between light, heavy, uh, passenger, or mixed. Um, but yeah, we're just going to do diesel. Diesel's always good. You can even put B unit in there if it is a B unit. So that way, um, you know, that's basically your units that don't have cabs. That way JMRI doesn't take a like a F7B and make it as the only locomotive for the train. That wouldn't make sense, right? All right, so here is where we're going to have to do a little bit of research. And in order to do that, we're going to need Google. All right, so I got Google pulled up. First thing we're going to look at is, or search is Alco RS1. And we can use Wikipedia. Sometimes Wikipedia gives us all the information we need. Um, however, I like using this website here, the dieselshop.us. They ha they're really, really good as far as like all their data and stuff and you can even see the roster they've got build dates for the roster which really helps so we're gonna go ahead and scroll well let's see Rock Island sometime is listed as Chicago Rock Island and Pacific bingo right there so and this is locomotive 742 so it'd be this group here and it looks like this these were built in uh, May of 1943 so that's good information to have on the front end so we'll go ahead and put our build date in there at 543 all right <clears throat> but I'm not getting the information that I want I don't want just the roster I want like actual information so let's just check Wikipedia just see what they have American Rails is another good one too. Alright, so when looking on Wikipedia, we're mainly looking over here in this column because, you know, it tells you like the prime mover, you know, how many horsepower, the length, which we need to know. Um, so we're going to be going back and forth between JMRI and adding this locomotive in here. So first thing is length. And I'm just going to slide this over for the time being. And we can see the length here is 55, 5 and 3 quarter inches. So let's just say 55, or let's round it up to 56. Better to always be safe than sorry. Uh, next thing, we need weight. How many tons? How, what is the weight of this dude in tons? All right, so loco weight, they got it in pounds. So it's uh, 740 or 247 500 pounds all right so if we pull open our calculator and take 247 500 
and divide that by 2,000 because 2,000 pounds equals one ton. That comes up to be 123.75 tons, which we will round up to 124. And it's already got 124 in there. So I'm pretty sure we could put 123.75. Yeah, it looks like it takes it, so that's good to know. All right, horsepower. Let's see if we can find horsepower right here. Power output is 1,000 HP. 1,000, that's perfect. Tractive effort. This shows to be 40,425. So 40, comma, 425. All right, consist. You could create a consist if you wanted to. It's kind of like earlier in the cars where we were looking up the... Um, Oh, whatchamacallit, but it was basically the grouping of the cars. So, locomotives have it as well, but we call those consist. I'm not consisting this locomotive, so I don't need to mess with it. Owner. Ah, it's got my name in there, so we'll use that. And we could throw a comment in there if we wanted to. So, that would be good, like if you have like a heritage unit of some type, or like a bicentennial. You know, something that is out of the ordinary. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and let's minimize our Google and let's slide our thing back over. And we're going to close that out. And we're going to go ahead and just add locomotive. All right, so it says loco weight must be in the format of XX tons. All right, so it can't say the weight. So we're just going to round it up to 124. <clears throat> All right. And for some odd reason, it updated the horsepower. I don't know why, because that don't make sense. So let's go ahead and save it. There we go. All right, so now I got the horsepower saved. And like I said, that is basically um, what you can do as far as that. Um, you can add um, your JMRI Decoder Pro roster in here. Um, I want to say there is a way to uh, import that in here. And I'm going to have to look it up. Yeah, right here. Locomotor roster and you can import that from JMRI. And that's probably the easier way of doing it if you've been using Decoder Pro like crazy. So I would just go that route. However, if you haven't been using Decoder Pro, you might as well just do it this way and be done. All right, so other than that, that's really all there is to adding a locomotive. You just got to do a little bit of research to make sure that you got the right horsepower, the length, things like that. And then later on, we'll be able to go and add the locations, destinations, things like that later. So, all right, y'all stay tuned to part four. We're going to start adding locations uh, into uh, Operations Pro. Um, so that way we can do the last sections, which would be, uh, creating the routes and then eventually building our trains. So other than that, uh, y'all have a great one and happy railroading.